Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel today. So today's video is going to be my very first video in my study strategies series, which I just came up with about 10 minutes ago. Um, but I've had a lot of people request how to study or how I study for specific classes that I'm in. Um, and I thought, you know, obviously if I put it all in one video, that can be a lot because different classes require different strategies. So I thought it'd be really fun if I just did a series with how I study for each individual class that I'm in. Um, and I'll also try to do some for classes I took last semester as well, because obviously I didn't do these videos last semester. Um, but this very first one is going to be about how I study for microbiology. So I just had my first microbiology exam today and I got 85 correct out of 90 questions. So I'm pretty excited about it. Um, but yeah, so I thought it would be really good for me to show you what strategies I used leading up to the exam, what kind of things I do to really get stuff solidified in my memory. Um, and obviously, like I said, different strategies work for different classes. So these strategies could work for you if you're in different science classes. Um, you know, microbiology can be very similar to any biology class, really. Um, chemistry classes are similar, um, things like that. So take these strategies, and even though I use them just for microbiology, you can use them for any class that you want to. Um, but yeah, so without further ado, this is how I studied for my microbiology exam. Okay, so I sped up some of these clips so you can really see what I do over a little bit of time. Um, but the very first thing I do, of course, is watch my lectures. Um, again, for the millionth time, I am a DE student, so I watch all of my lectures at home on my computer. Um, so our professors record the lectures in advance. And that is when we watch them. So what I'm doing right now is I am watching a lecture on the program that we watch them on and taking notes. If you notice, I'm not writing a lot because I'm really trying to work on listening and only writing down additional clarifications or additional information that I might need to add to the PowerPoint slides themselves. The next thing I do is learning objectives. And you've heard me talk about this a million times in my videos, but for, and I do this for every class, um, but I answer the learning objectives. And this is really helpful. Sorry about the lighting, by the way. The lighting looks terrible, but I don't have one of those fancy cameras. But um, learning objectives are really helpful because a lot of professors use those to create their exam questions. Um, and they really help you understand if you really know the material or if you just think you know the material. So basically I go through each of the PowerPoints and I answer the learning objectives. So like for this particular class, the first slide of each PowerPoint has the learning objectives on there. I copy the question down and then I go through the PowerPoint and I answer it. While I answer it, I really try to sit there, memorize, think through the process, and really commit that stuff to memory in my mind and then write it down. Um, so that kind of helps solidify stuff in my brain. And then for this class, I also went back and I watched our class session where this particular professor would run the class sessions like a Q&A. So he, I mean, he would ask us questions and we would answer them. So I went back and I basically copied down every question that he asked us and what the answer was. Um, and that really helped me know what I don't know as well. Then anytime I get to a topic where I really need a visual, I will draw out. So here I drew the um, glycolysis steps, the citric acid cycle steps, and I highlighted what the products are. So where ADP is produced and ADH, all that good stuff, because we had to know that. And then I also included the end products. Um, I made a table here of how many ATPs are produced in each step. Um, and then here are the antibodies and what they do and what structure they come in. And it's just like a little summary table to help me narrow my studying because um, I had to memorize those. And then here are the different ways that gene transfer can happen in bacteria. And I drew it out because it really helped me visualize the process. Um, and then different methods of conjugation on the bottom that we had to memorize. Here I made a table of all the lymphocytes and what they do. Um, and then I also made a table of all the different like white blood cells um, and what they do and why they're important. And now we're at the day of the exam. So basically I just go through all the notes that I took, um, all the questions and answers and all the homework that I did, and I re-go over that um, and just kind of quiz myself on the material. And then I also go over anything that I know that I struggled with the day before and I'm still a little iffy on. 
what I'm doing right now, which you can't see my screen, is I go back over my homeworks and quiz myself on those, make sure I know the answers to the homework. Um, you can see me like talking to myself and nodding because I like to make sure that I really know that information and I have it committed to memory. All right, everyone. So that is everything I did to study for my microbiology exam. Hopefully that kind of gave you some insight as to what I do to prepare and how my grades are. Um, I don't want to be like braggy, but as good as, good as they are, I do have pretty good grades. Um, like I said in my last video, my grades this semester aren't as good as I was hoping for. So I'm really trying to refine my study skills and really make sure my time that I spent studying is efficient and isn't super time consuming, but is like making the most out of my time that I spend studying. So that is everything I did. Um, if you have any questions or if you do anything differently that you think would benefit all of us for studying, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I would love to have you. Please subscribe before you leave. Um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want me to complete this series, give it a thumbs up. If this is something you'd be interested in, let me know. Um, and I think that's it. I will see you guys in my next video.